Now we're going to our guest here who I appreciate joining us today. He's Brandon Toy. And a few weeks ago, his um, resignation letter went viral. Millions read it. Military uh, veteran himself, former uh, U.S. soldier who served in Baghdad in Sadr uh, City neighborhoods as a military policeman. Uh, he was a Humvee machine gunner who um, trained and supported Iraqi personnel and Iraqi policemen. He later joined General Dynamics as an engineer project manager for developmental engineering projects. General Dynamics, one of the largest defense contractors in the country. He recently resigned in protest of America's dirty wars, close quote. We've crossed the line and done things that I thought our enemies did. And further states, I have always believed in every foot soldier threw down his rifle, war would end. I hereby throw mine down. And here's why I wanted to get uh, Brandon a toy on. We have his, his resignation letter just went up on Infowars.com. I'm going to have it put back in the features uh, so everybody uh, can go read that. Uh, but the issue here is that that's why they want to go to the drones and autonomous ground robots and basically it looks like a tank that's autonomous and operates on its own, a hunter seeker. I, I was uh, a, a Marine Corps colonel in 1999, contacted me. Well, I, I, I met him out in California at some urban events they were having. And um, well, I met a contact who got me in touch with him. And then I met him. And uh, he said, look, I can't tell you all the classified stuff, but the plan is by 2020 to be 100% human free. He goes, I don't know if they're going to reach that goal, but he goes, it's basically Skynet. Well, and I've been telling you that since 1998, 1999, I guess it was 99, Operation Urban Warrior. And now you see all that being announced. So understand that they know humans aren't going to go along with this. That's why the Foxconn factories are going to robots. They've ordered, was it 15 million of them? 5 million already got delivered. They're just telling the folks, go out and die in the street. They chain their kids up to go to work in the morning to the power poles. How are we going to compete with Obamacare against that? And, and, and again, it's not computers as part of a normal evolution of technology. It's being done to make us obsolete, as Bill Joy, the head of Sun Microsystems, wrote in Why the Future Doesn't Need Us, April issue 2000 of Wired Magazine. So I want to explain, it's now time for the whistleblowing. It's now time to not go along with these illegal wars. It's now time to say no, because we get much further down this road, another six, seven, eight years, and they're a little bit behind, maybe 10 years, it's going to get harder and harder, folks, where it's not going to, that's why they're already ruining the military with women in frontline combat and all that. Because it's time to ruin it anyways and make it dysfunctional. Humans have free will. They don't want that. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Brandon Toy, for joining us. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, your experience in Iraq, as I don't have it in your bio. Are you Army or Marines? Yes. And uh, just a little bit about your awakening and your letter. And uh, I really appreciate your courage in coming on. Well, thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, I spent 2005 in Baghdad on the east side. I was stationed at Camp Rustamaya, and I was a, uh, a machine gunner, as you said. And our mission was to train uh, combat uh, uh, troops, Iraqi uh, policemen and Iraqi National Guard, um, uh, to basically take over uh, was the plan. Um, uh, I spent the entire the year there, came back, went to school, started to work for General Dynamics. It was an easy transition, of course, going from the military to a defense contractor. And uh, even in Iraq, I started to realize that uh, this wasn't exactly what I signed up for. Uh, and when I got home, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of journalists, whistleblowers, activists who have come out with uh, um, uh, evidence of criminal actions by the United States military that uh, I became aware of. Uh, and I just... I couldn't be a part of it anymore, Alex. Uh, the last straw for me was when they, uh, the Guardian and uh, BBC Arabic came out with the expose on Colonel Steele's dirty wars in Iraq. And I realized that when I was training uh, Iraqi soldiers and Iraqi military policemen that I was actually training uh, death squads and uh, torture units. Now, uh, I've got a partial bio on here, and I, and I read your letter last week. Were you in the Army or the Marines? Army. You're in the army, and uh, for those that don't know, there's been admitted death squads uh, at least since Vietnam, and I even remember they used some Latin American former death squads uh, in Iraq that came out in the news a few years ago, uh, and and now they've announced under NDAA that they're establishing paramilitary secret death squad groups. I happen to know those were already in the U.S. previously with uh, sheep-dipped army officers because I had a family member, a great uncle, 
uh, who was actually uh, involved in that even back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, tell us about these death squads uh, and uh, what you saw being established. Well, when I was on the ground, I didn't really know that we were training death squads. I knew that the uh, forces had been infiltrated by the Shia militias, but I, I didn't know, know any torture or uh, murdering was going on, uh, aside from you know what I saw in the streets. Uh, it wasn't until I came back that I became aware of it, and uh, you know, those uh, I saw my time overseas as my shining moment in my life, and uh, uh, to come to the realization that I was uh, participating in war crimes. Um, that big of war crimes was uh, devastating. Talk about uh, what constitutes a war crime. Um, I think uh, torture is a war crime, uh, murder, um, uh, invasion, a uh, uh, war of aggression is a war crime. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's lots of war crimes. You can find lots of examples. Absolutely, and it's, it's, it's a crime against humanity what's been done to Iraq. The Lancet Medical Journal estimated uh, just a few years ago that it was over a million dead Iraqis because of the consequences uh, of the war, and around a half million before that from the sanctions alone. Uh, unbelievable, and I, and I tell you, the way the universe works, in my gut, I know, just for Americans allowing ourselves to be part of this, this is going to come back on all of us. Yeah, absolutely. You can't take these kind of actions and not expect retribution. The the things that our government is doing in our name right now are, are criminal, and, and there will be retribution down the road. Well, I agree there'll be some real organic asymmetrical resistance, but I'm talking about just the way the world seems to work. The retribution will be this evil will be done to us by our government here as well. Uh, yeah, that thought terrifies me, but uh, it, it seems to be heading in that direction, Alex, and that's uh, that's very scary. Why did you decide to resign uh, from the defense contractor you were working for? I mean, I guess to make your stand. Tell us about your letter. Yeah, sure. Uh, after that expose came out that I spoke about earlier, I, I sat down and I wrote that letter. I was just irate for about five days. I didn't sleep. Uh, my wife thought I was going crazy. And uh, I wrote the letter and I said, this is it. I'm getting out of here. Uh, I no longer saw a line between being on the front lines, holding a rifle over theater, and working for the same people back home, whether I was typing a, a benign report, uh, uh, managing a project, uh, whatever. I was still working in the same power structure. Uh, I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I, I thought and I felt one thing, but my actions uh, completely betrayed uh, me and, uh, in my opinion, my own country. So I finally uh, just, uh, I had enough. I said, listen, I want to, I want to have my voice heard. I want to make a statement. I've been working 10 years for these guys. I don't believe in it anymore. In fact, I believe that uh, uh, these actions are criminal and the things that we're doing are, are uh, illegal. I, I, want to, I want to come out very publicly and say that uh, I'm not a part of it anymore, and, um, and that's why I wrote the letter. Just recently, we've seen a lot of public suicide letters where they say, you know, different Army and Marines say, I've committed so many murderous crimes that... There's no way for me to even apologize and try to reverse it. I'm just going to kill myself. I wish they would do what you've done and just speak out and then try to reverse it that way and not kill themselves. That only adds one more casualty to this madness. God can always reprieve us. Even if you don't believe in God, it's, it's always possible you know, in the works you do in this world to try to reverse some of what uh, people have been part of. Plus, people get lied to and sucked in. It's easy to look in hindsight you know, and say, oh, these people are evil, but it's incremental. It's peer pressure. But when I read about these suicide letters and then I see somebody like Private Gruckheimer, uh, who back in uh, 2003 was in the Ithaca Journal and then on Fox News, he said, oh, we go in and kill entire villages because they're bad people. Uh, we uh, kill the men, women, and children. And then the, the Pentagon clarified, well, only certain villages. And for those that don't know, uh, why don't you describe the type of uh, things that go on? Because it's been confirmed by General Tagumbu's own report of the Army of what went on at Abu Ghraib and other facilities, including the rape of children sanctioned in front of their parents. I mean, that is Hellraiser type stuff. That's despicable. That uh, is right up there on the level of uh, you know Nazism. Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, bad things happen. It's unfortunate that the American people don't see more of it. The mainstream media basically ignores the entire uh, affair. Um, if you if you didn't uh, pay attention to alternate news, would you even know the Afghanistan war was going on anymore? I've asked certain people, talked to certain people about Afghanistan, and they said I, I don't even know we were at war there anymore. Um, the one thing that really bothers me is drone warfare. 
uh, in particular, the December 17, 2009 attack in uh, Yemen that killed uh, around you know 40 plus people, uh, a dozen or so children, um, at least a dozen pregnant women. Um, uh, these things happen on a daily basis. They're, they're substantiated. There's uh, scientific reports uh, from independent third parties out. You can go read about them. That information's out there. These things are documented. Sure. They are taking place. Well, I mean, here's my issue. There's going to be problems in war. There's going to be casualties. But when you get to the attitude of none of it matters and then reward kind of a psychopathic behavior, you know you're in trouble. And that's being consciously done. We've been led to these wars via lies. And, and, and now I see this being brought back domestically. Uh, that's my point about this will come back on us one way or the other. The, every day I see police now who are generally war vets shooting people that just mildly talk back to them. And, of course, I know from the vets I've talked to, that was part and parcel of behavior in Afghanistan and Iraq. What is the Pentagon thinking? That alone, acting like that, will make you lose the hearts and minds. So it's clearly a madness that I see going on uh, from the top down. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think that the actions that we allow our government and military to take overseas, if we allow them to dehumanize people overseas, uh, treat them as less than human, commit war crimes against them, it's only a matter of time before they, uh, as you say, uh, uh, bring that back home and start using those tactics back home. I think we're already seeing it with the mass surveillance. Which is totally illegal, but they're just doing it. I love what does your wife and family say when you were about to give up an extremely lucrative long-term uh, career working for one of the biggest defense contractors in the world. Are are are, are they supporting your your uh, stance? They're, they've been very supportive. Everybody has been overwhelmingly supportive. My family is obviously worried about how I'm going to make a living. I have four kids. I'm married. Um, I'm I'm concerned about that too. However, I I just I want I wanted to get my uh, voice out there. I, I wanted to make this stand. Uh, it was more important to me to make the stand than to have that security and that uh, that those financial benefits that came ar uh, along with going along and giving consent to their actions. Was it a process or was it watching the persecution of Snowden or Bradley Manning? I mean, what finally made you? Um, go into the thought process of uh, you know getting out of your main career field. No, it was absolutely a process. Uh, I, I started to become more and more aware of the things that were happening. Back when I enlisted, I was uh, completely brainwashed, you could say. Uh, I went along with it. I was. Uh, I thought the military was the greatest thing in the world. The uh, I went along with the invasion of Iraq. I was a cheerleader for it, basically. And uh, over time, I, I started to see things that uh, didn't sit quite right with me. And, and when I, I looked into it more, and maybe it was just a, a process of maturing, but when uh, hard evidence came out, especially the stuff that uh, Bradley Manning uh, made known to the world, and then uh, Edward Snowden and uh, the writing of Glenn Greenwald and, and many other people, uh, the more and more aware of it I became, the more and more divided I became inside between who I really was and what I was doing, what my actions were. So there was that classic battle of the devil on one shoulder, the angel on the other, and the angel won out. The angel did win out, thankfully. L let me ask you this question, because I've gone through this myself on other issues. When I turn down a big contract to sell out or... Uh, you know, I go through something that's really when I'm being threatened and, 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 and it's almost like once I once you go through the fear to the other side, did it feel like a giant weight was lifted off of you when you fired that letter out and then saw the validation of people resonating with it and you becoming an example for others? Uh, clearly, I would imagine the scheme of things reversing massively some of the bad you've done. It, it felt wonderful. I'll tell you, uh, the, the place I worked, uh, General Dynamics main headquarters, is located on Mound Road. It's a six-lane highway. I went out to lunch that Monday before I shot off my letter, and I drove back and forth, and, uh, and I was listening to music, just dreading going back because I dreaded going there uh, uh, all the time. And, and I just made this decision. I, this is right. It felt 100% right. The only reason I wasn't doing it was exactly what you said. Fear of the unknown, the uncertainty, you know, how am I going to make a living? How am I going to support my family? But once I made that decision, I just, I felt very right inside. I felt it was completely the right thing to do. Now, you asked me about when I hit the send button. I'll tell you, that was a moment that was very similar to when I signed my enlistment papers, uh, which is interesting. You know, I signed my enlistment papers. I said, there's no coming back from this. You're doing this. You sign this paper, there's no turning back. When I hit that send button, I had the same feeling.
But this time you really did join the human family in the Republic for the fight for the heart and soul of humanity that's happening right now. And that's what's happening. I don't know if you're a spiritual person, but at a spiritual level, I re and I've never really had a spiritual show, but more and more I see people are making their decision right now. People are getting on, on which side they're on. And I just feel sorry for people that are choosing the wrong side or via peer pressure. But this empire we've become, you know, it needs to stop. And, and then they're funding Al-Qaeda so they have a threat to then have the NSA spy on us. I mean, it's just it, it, the whole narrative is falling apart. It's absolutely disgusting the things they do to justify uh, their illegal and criminal actions. Um, the Patriot Act, the name alone should tell you that uh, that's something that we need to be absolutely uh, uh, infuriated by and uh, afraid of. Uh, anytime that you uh, drape something in the flag like that and then uh, use it to justify uh, wildly just uh, go go off the deep end with exactly the that we've taken is is uh, it's despicable really it's it's, it's well criminal. this republic it is criminal was founded on ideas even though we never implemented them all about don't have spying have a small government individual liberty now all these senators like Graham and others get up there and say we've got to spy on you without warrants for your own good you know to defend freedom when they're butchering what America stands for in front of us, they are the traitors. I want to come back and talk about how you're taking action. You're not just going to resign and not you know, help build the Skynet system that's going to replace humanity, basically. That's the globalist plan. You are also going to get on the offense for our Bill of Rights and Constitution. And what Brandon Toy, Army police veteran of Iraq... Uh, is doing is the answer. Do not commit suicide because of uh, guilt you have because you have a conscience. That means you're human. We need you to fight for humanity. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. 
lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original, real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> I'm going to spend a few more minutes with Brandon Toy, and then we're going to get into some of the other news and open the phones up. Then Catherine Albrecht's going to be joining us on all the huge coming out of the NSA surveillance grid news that's coming out. Google, you name it. She's going to be joining us. You know, Catherine, I've heard her on the air. She's here on the Genesis Network. I've heard her talk about getting up to stage three, almost stage four cancer. They were debating which it was. And thanks to the good Lord above uh, beating it, and it's in total remission right now, uh, that that made her not be worldly anymore. That made her not be vain anymore. Not that she ever was that much, but it really focused her to realize what's real and what isn't, what matters versus what doesn't. What matters is being good. What matters is being informed and not being a slave and not buying into the sick hype that is American culture today. This is the opposite of what this country was founded on. And it is going to be good men and women taking action and speaking out against corruption everywhere. Not the diversions of MSNBC that is going to save this society or the diversions of CNN or Fox for that matter. It is going to be about really historically looking where we are right now compared to other nations that have done similar things. Of every other country in history that, that, that did what we're doing, we called evil. All our history books, our textbooks, our common sense, this is what the bad guys do. You read the Bible, everything in the Old Testament, New Testament that corrupt empires did, we do it now. And of course the chickens are coming home to roost. Of course they're taking the private and public pension funds now. There's not going to be anything left soon, just like Ross Perot warned about NAFTA and GATT. These are all selectively written for insiders. There's not going to be a defense contractor job. In just 10 years or so, it's going to be a handful of what there was because it's going to be robots, building robots, building robots, servicing robots. Most engineers I talk to now say no one even knows how all this stuff works. Not one person, not 20 people. The, the computers, the programs do. It's already in the algorithms surpassed us. And people like Ray Kurzweil are toddling forward going, I'm going to live forever. I don't believe in God yet. I will be God. I will merge with the machines. We'll squash the rest of you like a bug. You won't even count. We won't even think about you. That's a quote. Will we get rid of you? Just like I step on a bug and don't notice it. As if we're just going to let them decide our future. As if they're even right about what's going to come out of this. That's a question right there. The best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. We have a Brandon Toy uh, on with us, uh, served hers in Iraq and some of the uh, most out of control areas as a military policeman in the army. And he uh, 
I, I guess a few years after being there working in the private sector as a defense contractor, uh, just couldn't handle it and resigned a few weeks ago in his resignation letter that's up on Infowars.com. Uh, that's been added to the featured area, right? We tell them to do that. Roger, Roger. Fantastic. Uh, and so everybody needs to get that and send that back out to everyone so you can see what the real soldiers are saying. And, of course, Pat Tillman started saying stuff like this, and they killed him. And even gave you a nice story about how he charged a machine gun nest of Al-Qaeda. Turned out it was friendly fire on purpose. And the Air Force uh, coroner, who they had do the Army autopsy uh, there at the base, said this was homicide. It was another Air Force uh, coroner, it was also an Army cor coroner was involved, secondarily said the same thing, who said that uh, Ron Brown, the, the Commerce Secretary, was shot in the head. See, there's a lot of good people that won't lie for the system. And let me tell you something, folks. It's those men and women that are in government, corporations, private life, that are holding back the total evil coming in. That's how history works. Good men do nothing. Good men stand down. Good men serve evil for, uh, because of lies. And all hell breaks loose because then every secret demon in the bad people is now in control. No one's there to block them. No one's there to say no. Because you're beaten over the head by 21st century propaganda. But Brandon Toy understands the info war. And that's why he is going to become a filmmaker and is doing a Kickstarter program, and I'm not involved in this, but I think it's a great idea, that's why we're having him on, just like we had the Paul Revere contest. Because it's about getting you to become filmmakers, you to become radio bloggers, you to become writers, you to report on what's happening in your area. Doesn't mean you're perfect, doesn't mean you have all the answers, but you have a good heart, you wanna do good, you've gotta take action, and together, we will beat this technocratic takeover. So Brandon, tell us about your Kickstarter program. I love the name of the film you wanna produce. Uh, it's more human than human, and then we'll put it back up on screen. I'll give them the full headline, less than human. Again, more human than human slash less than human. Brandon Toy, tell us about the film idea you've got. Uh, sure, Alex. Actually, it's more than human, less than human. And uh, you can check out more information at uh, uh, morelesshuman.com. That'll redirect you to the Kickstarter uh, project. Yeah, let's put that back on screen for folks. Uh, if they're TV viewers, and I'll give it out again for folks. I was reading from the bottom of the screen. Uh, more than human forward slash less than human. What does that mean? That means basically... Uh, I want to I want to look at the causes and consequences of viewing uh, certain populations, certain people as less than human, and other populations as more than human. Why do we uh, violate the natural rights, the human rights, the civil rights uh, of some people and view it as all right, and other people uh, we would never do that same thing to? For example, consider uh, uh, the reverse of a drone strike in Yemen. Uh, imagine that we. Uh, uh, committed a drone strike in Manhattan. We uh, take an extreme example. Uh, the new Al Qaeda head was hiding out in Manhattan, and the CIA decided that uh, it was easier to drop a drone in there, and they uh, uh, killed a bunch of civilians. We would never accept something like that, but we'll accept it if it happens in Yemen or Pakistan or another Middle Eastern country that we're not even at war with. And it's not even because they're, quote, brown, because they're bombing areas that have, quote, white people in them. It's because the media has said it's okay because they're all terrorists. Exactly. And if you remember, we had this so-called national discussion about drones not too long ago. And uh, it focused on, well, can, d d does the government have the power to kill a U.S. citizen? And uh, should that really be the question? Um, does it matter if they're a U.S. citizen? Uh, should we be killing anybody uh, that we're not at war with uh, by dropping a bomb from a drone on them? Uh, and a lot of civilians are dying uh, because of the criminal actions of the United well, States. Well, then I've heard talk show hosts say, hey, uh, war is terror. You know, we need to bomb more cities like in World War II, uh, which, again, uh, Hitler was terrible. But if you actually really study the real history... He was only bombing military bases in England, and they did nighttime raids on Berlin on civilian areas to trick the Nazis to bomb civilian stuff so the infrastructure wouldn't get destroyed and to get the people behind the war, and Hitler played right into it. And then that introduced the idea of unrestricted uh, submarine warfare on civilian ships, unrestricted uh, bombing of whole cities. I mean, it's, and then that led to bombing Hiroshima and Nagasaki, even though the Japanese had already tried to uh, give up days before, they wanted to set the precedent that the atomic age had begun.
Yeah, this is not a new tactic. The United States military has used this tactic, as you alluded to, during World War II in the uh, fire bombings in Germany, uh, in Japan, um, in Vietnam. And uh, the drone uh, program is just another example. And it's, I, I don't really think that it's intended to take out al-Qaeda targets. I think its main purpose is psychological warfare to say, hey, uh, you speak out against us, you act against us. Uh, we classify you as a terrorist. We will kill you and anybody around you. Well, it's more than that. That's that's what they tell the troops on the surface. In Pakistan, the globalists actually brought in 30,000 Taliban al-Qaeda leaders in the airlift of evil 2001, 2002. That's you know, BBC News, AP Reuters, and actually used them to destabilize. I've had Hamid Ghul, their former top general, on, and I don't just trust him. Uh, Mohammed Karzai has gone public. Now, it isn't that some of them aren't real terrorists, real jihadis. The issue is, is that they create an environment to where then they can use them to destabilize the country. And so it's just pure destabilization, just like they're using al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria right now. And, and, and it's really the American people that give their consent to this program. Uh, that's another reason that I resigned was I wanted to with, withdraw my consent. Uh, not only the American people, but the mainstream media uh, are, are absolutely complicit in this because nobody talks about it. Uh, it's not on the evening news. It's not on the mainstream media uh, news networks. Uh, we just kind of ignore it and accept it. We, we have consented to uh, committing war crimes overseas. How do people find your Kickstarter campaign and donate to it or pledge to donate so that you can get this film made? Yeah, go to morelesshuman.com and it'll redirect you to the Kickstarter page. You can also search for my name at uh, kickstarter.com. And uh, you've already gotten 55,000 pledge to the 27,000 goal. Really? Oh, $55. I'm having yeah, a... Uh, $55. We just kicked it off yesterday afternoon. You're the first one to get the word out. I don't know. I mean, I was having a Freudian moment there because I'm so used to the success of these. I bet you've got $100,000 by tomorrow. Uh, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, I can't, I, I'm very passionate about this subject, passionate about filmmaking. I want to draw as many people into this, uh, helping make this picture as possible. So any ideas, any offers of help are more than welcome, not just financial support. Well, that's fantastic. And, and, and I'm interested in what you're doing j just because of the idea of people not committing suicide over, over you know, having guilt and knowing they've done things that were wrong in the final equation, but now going and, and, and you know, a reproving what you've done, a reprieve for society. That's the answer. Uh, let's talk about suicide. Uh, they talk about it being, what, sevenfold previous records uh, from any war, more people dying uh, from suicide than in combat. Uh, what has that been like for you? Have you known anybody that's committed suicide? I haven't known anybody personally, but I can absolutely understand how someone can get to that point. When your whole world is built up around this idea uh, that you're an American soldier or you're part of the... Uh, the establishment and everybody supports that. That's how you make your your living. Um, you're viewed as a hero because you went overseas. Uh, that 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 creates your identity, and to go against your identity is a very scary thing, especially when you have no support system to do so. So uh, people get very scared. They feel trapped, and they think the only way out is to uh, end their life, which is uh, very sad. I would say to anybody out there who's thinking about taking that course, don't do it. You do not have to stay in the system. You do not have to continue to give your consent for anything that you find illegal, criminal, or otherwise. Now, I know that General Dynamics, where you just resigned from a few weeks ago, they actually make some of the latest drones that are out there. What were you working on there? I was working on the Striker Combat Vehicle. Uh, it's an eight-wheeled eight, eight, eight uh, uh, vehicle platform. What do you make of the deployment now? It was 2,000 this year, but about 5,000 the last four years. Uh, more than 7,000 uh, of the big war wagons that they've given to Homeland Security, the open training for, quote, combat with the American people, saying now that gun owners, returning veterans, uh, that uh, they are the number one threat, not al-Qaeda. I mean, they're clearly trying to flip the script now off of Muslim extremists that they've helped finance in many cases onto the American people. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that, Alex, but uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, like I said, when, when you uh, start taking and using these tactics overseas, it's only a matter of time before they start seeing the people at home as enemies, too. And they always want to uh, squash anyone who speaks out against them. If they're a whistleblower, uh, 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 an activist, otherwise, if you speak out against the, uh, the power elite, you will uh, feel their wrath. 
You know, you look at uh, the, the, the former head of Google, but he still advises it, Eric Schmidt, who, who says you have no privacy. You look at uh, the head of um, things like Facebook, Zuckerberg, saying his users are dumb efforts for trusting him. But then they're obsessed with their privacy and have their girlfriends, in the case of Schmidt, wear hoods over their heads like Michael Jackson's kids. I mean, how do they think they're going to build this technocracy and then they're going to get away with it? I mean, the elite never get away with stuff when they build a tyranny. Smart elites, even if they're not moral, historically, and I've had a lot of top historians on who agree with me, they want to build something that has some checks and balances. I mean, this is madness what they're setting in motion. Yeah, it's absolute madness. You can draw parallels back to uh, totalitarian totalitarian states of the past and when you kind of wake up and realize that this is our government the united states government that's doing this the uh, uh baseball and apple pie and all that that you grew up with the uh, the, the the flag waving and and uh, kind of try to reconcile that with the actions that you're seeing uh it, it's hard to believe but these things are taking place they're documented you can go out there and find lots of good information solid information on this stuff and uh it's happening Sir, it's, it's, it's been very informative and uplifting to have you on just to know that we can have folks that have been through terrible things like you've been through because you're a victim of this as well, uh, of the American people buying into mass delusion just like the Nazis and the Soviets did. And it's great to see you, uh, you know, helping turn the tide. I think we're starting to turn the tide, and that's why they're kind of coming out with everything now in an attempt to hide it in plain view. Uh, what's your take on where we stand as a civilization? I hope so. I think more and more people are, are coming to realize that uh, these actions are taking place uh, because of brave whistleblowers uh, like Bradley Manning and Edward Snowden who are coming out with evidence that they can't deny. Uh, more people are starting to wake up. And uh, I also agree with you that they're uh, getting more and more overt in their uh, illegal and criminal actions, uh, which is terrifying. Um, I'm worried about the country, but I think there are sure. a lot of people here who will stand up, speak out, act when it's time to act well they're trying to demoralize us they're trying to break our will they're using military tactics on us but i found it's our military men and women that are the easiest to wake up because you guys are aware of these tactics and go wait a minute this is being used on all of us and so you guys tend to not be as naive as the public. So as much as we can criticize the military for being involved in a lot of bad things, there's a reason Homeland Security says you're the number one enemy once you're out, because you are one of our biggest hopes, and you're showing that right now. Brandon, we salute you. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, having me on, Alex. You bet. And we, and we want to help you. Give out that website one more time so we can get you the money you need. Sure. It's morelesshuman.com. More or less human. Dot com. God bless you. Great idea. People can see your uh, breakdown there on the site. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Alex. All right, folks, we're going to come back and get to the latest NSA news that I've just mentioned. And then Catherine Albrecht's going to come in. We're going to go through all of it uh, with her. And I've got a bunch of other news as well on the economy and on uh, the fake terror alerts. In fact, I'll cover that when we come back in the next short segment. Uh, briefly, I want to tell you about an amazing sponsor that we've had for a long time. They have some of the best colloidal silver and, and souped up colloidal silver type systems out there it's supernatural silver pathogens are becoming increasingly dangerous causing deadly outbreaks in hospitals nursing homes schools and restaurants antibiotics are ineffective because they are overused uh, new supernatural silver offers a safe and effective means of killing pathogens where antibiotics and other drugs fail uh, for more information on how Supernatural Silver can protect you and your family and every cupboard needs it, go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code Alex Says. That's one word, Alex Says, for 20% off. That's a huge discount. And uh, by the way, Supernatural Silver is also sold in some stores. I've noticed that when I use normal allergy stuff in my size, it doesn't work. When I use this sprayed into my nose, it knocks it out. SupernaturalSilver.com or follow their banners on InfoWars.com. Uh, or prisonplanet.com. And don't forget InfoWarsStore.com for all the books, T-shirts, films, the magazine, everything. And shopping with the good guys, the Patriots, funds us to continue to have this platform to warn folks. So thanks for your support. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.